So does jogging cause arthritis? Or does, when you have arthritis, does jogging start making the arthritis or deterioration of those joint surfaces worse? That's a big question that comes up every time in the clinic. What do you think the answer is? So let's clarify one thing. We're talking about classic general osteoarthritis, okay? And basically your arthritis, and we look at a joint surface here, um, something you ever see at the end of that chicken bone, that very, very shiny appearance at the end of that chicken bone, it's actually smoother than ice. I mean, it's very slippery when we, as we, you know, when we're first born. And then it starts deteriorating, okay? And it's kind of the end of our knee right here. This is that, that area that you'll see that very shiny appearance there. Over time, you'll see that, that that joint unfortunately starts, you could take like a surgical probe and prod on it and it indents. When you're younger, it doesn't indent at all or doesn't depress at all. As it gets a little older, you may notice, um, depending on the level of arthritis, um, you'll have these fissures, like these little cuts in it, and it, you know, it gets almost like a sandpaper type appearance. Eventually over time, this shiny appearance, this breaks down and it starts going to the underlying bone that's underneath um, the cartilage and all that. And you get what they call bone on bone that is uh, detected really on an x-ray. You really can't do this just by a clinical exam, but that's the type of arthritis. But it's generally osteoarthritis is what we're referring to. And there are certain risk factors. Okay, blame your mom and dad. If there is a family history of arthritis, you're more um, likely to develop arthritis. Another issue is um, as you get a certain amount of body weight, if you're overweight, over a 30 BMI, um, you have a greater likelihood of developing arthritis. If you're in occupations that are very heavy related, especially laborers, construction workers, you do a lot of standing and things like that, that causes a little bit of faster deterioration. It's, it's a risk factor. It doesn't mean you're guaranteed. It's a risk factor for developing it. Um, and also a history of smoking. Um, that can also, you know, all these structures, all these things are risk factors. And the other thing that's one of the big things we'll talk about is a recent a trauma in the joint. So you may not, you may have had a, a knee injury or ACL reconstruction or some kind of shoulder, t you know, injury at some point. Um, you will unfortunately um, are at a higher risk for developing arthritis in the joint. If it was a joint or even a fracture that crosses a joint, a higher likelihood of developing arthritic changes that are a little faster than just age-related. There's a certain degree of um, changes that uh, a lot of joints go through that are just, you know, you're living on this earth and they're slowly changing over time. The other ones that are accelerating it or give you a greater likelihood. So those are some of the risk factors when you're deciding about osteoarthritis. So the answer is, so the answer is it depends, actually. For the most part, um, running, jog, I should say jogging and running, have a protective effect. It clears out a lot of the chemicals that contribute to joint deterioration, they feel. And running and jogging, thing, activities like that, and exercise actually has a protective effect on the joint and actually aids in it not developing arthritis as rapidly as someone that's inactive. There are exceptions. Um, elite runners that are doing greater than 50 miles a week, um, competitive weightlifting, wrestling, um, those are some of the activities that may actually lead to a, a little bit of faster deterioration of those joint services. So, but they are exceptions. And there's exceptions to that rule, I'm sure, as well. But keep that in mind that generally this activity is generally a little protective um, and makes it, uh, or decreases the chances of arthritic changes. And generally, I feel like when you look at joggers and people that are in, in health, they are going to be a little bit healthier individuals as other aspects of why they're a jogger, meaning they probably have, um, I'm not saying everyone, um, have a little bit better nutrition, their lifestyle is more conducive to healthier habits, um, hopefully less, like we talked about smoking, things like that, that aid in overall improvements in general health, put them in a better category as far as uh, joint deterioration. So that's the short answer. So if you're interested in start, if you're interested in starting to jog and you want to get into a program, we've got a few tips that would be helpful as far as making those first steps so you decrease the chance of you having a setback. Okay, one of the things we like to do is just starting with the training log. Really, you know, writing down how much mileage you're starting with, so you can objectively look at if you start having trouble. You know, how many miles were you doing? How long did it take? What was your pace? What was the weather like? Were you on hills? Were you on flats? So that's a good starting point, at least to write down what you have. And there's some great apps out there um, to kind of track it um, and give you a nice sense of you know, where you started and where you were. And if you start developing problems, how to figure out how to change that formula. If you are going to start and you've never done it before, I like to have people 
start with a simple formula of going down to a local high school track, which most of them are about a quarter mile. And it's just starting a nice walk, you know, do a walk for about one or two laps, which gives you about a quarter to a half mile, very simple start. At that point, we have you start doing some light jogging, jogging the straights and walking the turns. I would say the first day, <clears throat> as long as you've been cleared by your doctor and, you know, obviously all those health issues, uh, you're going to shoot for two or three laps, two to four laps, um, and that can give you close to, you know, half mile to three quarters of a mile start of actual jogging time. Write that down, tell, you know, write down how long it takes you to continue to do those, um, you know, to, to, to do that or complete that, and that's your baseline. Once you have your baseline, you know, write a note, wow, I was having a little knee pain, um, blah, 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 various things about the jog. If it was uneventful, write, hey, it felt great. And also, over the next couple of days, how do you react to it? Do you have any kind of muscular pain? Do you have joint level pain? I'm talking about the knee pain just around this area or in the back. Do you have more muscular pain, which is very normal and typically resolves in two or three days? Do you have any swelling in the joints? Kind of get a, like a whole body assessment of what's going on. And from there, you can slowly add to that formula. At a certain point, you can start doing a mile, let's say we'll do a quarter mile full out jog, actually starting to jog the turns, and then take a break for 30 seconds to a minute, even a rest or walking. But that formula of starting like a walk jog is a great way to get started and not get surprised by a real setback. Um, the nice thing about a high school track, it's very level. You're starting at a very even grade. A lot of them are, you have cinder tracks, you have older track, um, or a, a perma tracks just have a little bit more shock absorption and a consistent grade. So, um, other thing about it too is as you're on the track and you, you, you maybe you, you decided you're doing a little bit too much, you're not caught out in a run or walk far away from your house. You're right on the track and you can just jump in your car, get back on your bike and you're done with your workout. So that's a great thing. Training log and starting with that simple walk jog or walk run progression. But start out with a nice, you know, comfortable pace. Um, start out slower than faster and you should have success and we get that first layer I talk about of success, especially coming off an injury. But even so, if you've never done it before, you've never done or haven't done it in a long, long time, that's a great way to start out your pro program so you don't have a setback that kind of emotionally and physically beat you up. The other thing is you may need to lose a little weight. If you're having a lot of extra body weight, that may be a little hard. If you have someone that's really overweight and says, hey, I want to go jogging, it's good for my body weight, maybe we have to do an alternative activity. Um, maybe we're going to have to walk longer prior to going to a jog phase. It's just too much. You don't have the strength to support those joints, and you can get to that point. So there, therefore, you may have to start with maybe more you know, walking, biking, elliptical, something that doesn't have as much joint compression. And it's not that you can't do it eventually, you just need to take a couple steps before you jump to that phase. And we'll notice certain people say, I've started jogging, it's just, I get my knees get swollen, I can't do it. They may never be able to do it, I don't like to say that, but it may not, but it may be just that the progression is too fast. They have to take a period of time where they're walking, bicycles, things that are a little less traumatic on the joint, a little less stressful and more tolerable. So consider that, you don't have to throw jogging out, you just may have to take some baby steps before you get to that next level. You know. Um, also embracing some nutritional changes during that time, you know, decreasing some caloric intake in addition to exercising. I understand a lot of people are exercising to reduce weight, but to look at nutrition, a little healthier foods and hopefully a little less may help you make that segue into a full jogging program um, happen a little quicker than just simply exercising by themselves. Listen to your body. You know, like we talked about earlier, having a training log, um, don't go by just a, a set plan that you have. If you have a plan in your head, and some people are, you know, doing a 5K and they've got a certain layout, they need a certain amount of mileage leading up to doing this race. You gotta have to listen to it. You have to kind of make, you know, alterations in how much you jog or how much you do. Uh, we're trying to go for the long haul that you can do several races or continue to be a jogger or whatever. But you do have to listen to your body and when in doubt, you know, seek a little bit of help. You may need a little guidance. Sometimes you need a little exercise, a little range of motion in a couple areas that will make that transition to jogging a little easier. But it's important to kind of be in tune and that's actually where the log goes in. So getting the right footwear, you know, you really, if you start out with the right footwear, there's different types of foot types that are better and certain sneakers are made for different types of, you know, feet. So you want to find the one and really to talk to a professional that deals with a lot of that, um, you know, someone that's really in the running and jogging world. Um, unfortunately, some of the bigger stores out there don't have the personnel that are really 
to really understand the runner's and jogger's needs. So you really want to go to a place that really looks at you, watches you walk, really understands your type, your foot type, um, and they can get you the proper footwear. If you are using um, over-the-counter orthotics, make sure you bring those orthotics to get the, get the shoe. The orthotics tip will bring you a little higher in the shoe, so you want to make sure you have the right size shoe for your particular orthotic, custom or just a, an insert. Um, the shoe that you have when you have two or three years ago maybe that you were jogging with that you no longer have that you've been using to walk around the house or to do errands may not be the right shoe even if the top of the shoe looks good the actual sole may be breaking down more than you appreciate and I can't tell you any patients have told me wow I didn't realize how old my shoes were until I got my new ones so just because the top is good we want to make sure the actual components are good for you so keep that in mind if you have an old shoe it may be a good time if you're going to start this endeavor to kind of start out with a good fitting um, little um, and really maybe getting a, a someone that really is specialized in running to make sure you have the right shoe wear. Um, that can make a big difference in how you progress and we want you to have some success. So I would really invest in that. As far as how long you keep the shoes, a general formula is 500 miles um, before you rotate shoes. I like to, if you are coming off a shoe and you're just, maybe coming off an injury and you've had an old pair of shoes, what I do like to have is um, start with a period of time where you're going from your old shoe to your new shoe. So you take one you know, jog with your older shoe, and as you're getting used to that new shoe, sometimes you need a little time just to transition. So sometimes we'll take a couple weeks where you alternate shoes before you jump to that new shoe wear. Um, and if you are using orthotics, especially, um, especially custom orthotics, you want to gradually get used to walking in those orthotics before you just go to a run. If you make that big segue to running right away with your orthotics and you haven't even walked in them, you're just asking for disaster. For most cases, some people just transition, but I will tell you, try, if you have a custom orthotic, make sure you start out walking and gradually increase your mileage with the, that new orthotic before you completely do all your running in the new orthotic. Um, but that's important. Also, you may have to get some modifications. So whoever does the custom orthotics, talk to them. You may have to make some, one or two times, you may have to go back and have them make some alterations to that, to that orthotic, or you have to change the type of shoe. Psychomi, New Balance, Brooks are a lot of good shoes that provide a great foundation for most people for orthotics, and we, well, that's some of the companies that we like to recommend. You might need a physical therapy evaluation. <laughs> Not everyone needs it to start a running routine, but sometimes you have some range of motion loss in your foot, ankle, even your hip, you know, that needs to be addressed or you need a little bit more core strength or hip strength to really allow you to get back to jogging. So consider that, you know, may not, you may say, well, I'm just not meant to jog. Maybe, but if you really want to, it's a great activity. All you need is some shoes and some shirt and a t-shirt. You don't need a lot, especially in nice weather, to do this. So I would want you to give up completely on it. You may need a couple tweaks. Uh, you may need just a simple progression that's a little different. Some of our joggers can jog five days a week. They really have to do a little bit of cross training. They have to do biking one day and the alternate day for cardiovascular is jogging. And then they need two days break. Everyone, every person is different. You know, but to give up and on wholeheartedly, especially if you have a passion for it and you want to get back to it, you may need a little bit of guidance, and it doesn't take a lot of time to give you some quick tips on, on on how to progress. So, and maybe some things you just don't realize that you need. But you know, consider that as an option if you really have passion for it. Maybe need a couple of tweaks to maybe what you're doing to prep for it, especially in the older athlete. I'm older, I can appreciate it. You need a couple tweaks compared to when you're young, when you just ran out the door and you started jogging and got back into it. Didn't matter how long you, a year off, you went back to it without a problem. But consider that, that might help you out. So I hope this helps you out and hopefully you're armed by a few more facts on as far as whether you should try and go down the road of jogging, um, you know, feeling a little more comfortable that it doesn't guarantee that you're going to develop arthritis and also doesn't guarantee that you're going to worsen arthritis. Realize there's a high number of people that are walking around and running that have arthritis and don't even know it. So um, a lot of times pain, uh, issues as far as pain and, 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 and issues regarding things like that, arthritis is part of the clinical picture. There's a lot of other things that influence why you may be having pain and, and even if you have um, arthritis on an x-ray and MRI. So keep that in mind. Um, don't immediately assume just because that, that, with that diagnosis that you're, you know, you're doomed and that that's the origin of the problem. It could be you have some weakness someplace, you may have some range of motion loss. 
Maybe you've got to make some dietary changes. There's a bunch of things that can go into why you're developing this problem. And sometimes it's simply just training. You've got to get the right blend of training like we talked about earlier. Hope this helps you out. Um, we have a, a report on our webpage that will talk about uh, running tips. So you can go over to our page and we'll be a little more detailed than we went into here. If you enjoyed this video, you know, hit a, a subscribe, hit a like, and turn on your notifications so you hear about future videos.